that was that was great. That was great. Even people say, "Hey, Pastor, what the? Uh, you don't look like much. You from from Kentucky any longer?" <laughs> I said, "Well, that's because Jersey met Kentucky." <laughs> My wife, you know, she's from uh, New Jersey, you know, and of course, uh, New Jersey people—they're on the they're on the they're on the East Coast, you know. They are always people that like to, you know, wear socks and <laughs> shoes, uh, amen, and have things have things somewhat together, you know. And, you know the, you know, in Kentucky, you know, it's a it's an interesting thing, you know, uh, being from Kentucky. I'm proud to be uh, proud to be from old. Uh, Old Kentucky, you know, I'm raised on uh, watching Alvin York, that great American patriot from Tennessee, back there from my Daniel Boone. Oh, amen. Come on, man. Abraham Lincoln, uh, all those. It's a, it is a great, great, uh, it is a great, great thing. I said, uh, I um, went back to Kentucky, you know, and I go back there every once so often. I'm, don't worry, I'm going to start my sermon here in a minute. <laughs> hey, and uh, they say, oh, man, you, you do look like you're not from around here no longer. <laughs> and they say, how in, the, how in the world did you come to be like you are now? I said, well... Uh, yeah, you know, Kentucky boys, you know, the southern accent, you, you, you got to use, people think, you know, Kentucky people are kind of, or that southern accent, you know, you kind of, because you talk southern, you know, you kind of got that southern drawl, but you're missing something on the, in the cerebral area, you know what I mean? <laughs> I said, no, you just got to use that to your advantage. I remember, what, you know, I always wore, you know, the, uh, Certain kind of suits, you know, they want to never go above any certain price, you know. But, you know, I said, uh, my wife took me there in Macy's there in New York, there in Midtown Manhattan. I said, and we're sitting there, you know, my wife says, no, you need a Hugo Boss suit. I said, I don't know about no Hugo Boss, European skinny fit, probably got pink. <laughs> Sewn in the inside, amen. <laughs> you go boss, you know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of fighting with my wife, you know. You go boss, you know. The guys are in Macy's, you know. They're all wearing those suits. Looks like they're their, they're their little brothers, amen. Kind of, I'm going. I, I'm, I'm kind of fighting with my wife and the guy. I'm kind of, uh, and I'm winking on the inside because I really want the suit, but you just play stupid. Hey, no, I ain't gonna wear that. <laughs> my wife is. So I end up walking out of there with two You Go Boss black labels. <laughs> and my wife paid for it. Oh! But, but anyway, works out very, very well. Hey man, boot camp, you know. Remember boot camp there in Paris Island, 3rd Battalion I Company. First day, where you? Where are you from, Kentucky? Where are you from, Kentucky? Oh, Kentucky. I said, son, you must be blessed. This must be the first pair of shoes you ever owned the government gave to you. <laughs> and I was harassed until there was, there was a couple other guys from Tennessee that were actually there. And <laughs> they, uh, they got harassed more than me, but I... I never forbid, amen, we're on the rifle range, you know, and us people from Kentucky, amen, we, we learned how to shoot at a young age. I remember age, always age 8 to about 11 or 12, going out with my dad shooting squirrels or whatever we're shooting, you know, and I remember uh, 11 years old, my dad put a double barrel 12 gauge shotgun in my hand and said, all right, son, amen, it's time to get off the BB gun and let's go on. You're, if you're going to walk with the men, you're going to shoot with the men. Amen, time to start learning here. Amen, I put, put it up to my shoulder. I mean, I, was, I wasn't going to, hey, hey, that's, no tears. Amen, ain't no, ain't no, 
Kentucky boy, we ain't going to cry. Amen. Problem is, I put my fingers on both triggers. <laughs> Twelve years old, and they hit the target. I, I didn't care about hitting the target. I just wanted to survive this. Amen. <laughs> Kaboom, amen, I, I, I flipped back, I mean, I was on the ground, amen, I was in such pain, but hey, I got up and he said, how was it, boy? I said, load her back up again. <laughs> but it did serve me well there on the rifle range, you know, of course, us Kentucky boys, we did shoot expert, it was nothing for us. The time I was 18 and joined the Marines, amen, amen, we were shooting on the farm, it was almost like you could... Put the gun over your shoulder, put a mirror, there, there comes the groundhog, amen. <laughs> but I, I was always known during the boot camp, Kentucky. Hey, Kentucky, where's Kentucky at? See, Kentucky, will you help this boy? He can't even hit the target. I think he was from New York or something. All right, all right, we'll hit the target here. Amen, we helped old New York, amen. We didn't, he didn't get expert, but at least, amen, he didn't go unqualified, he qualified, amen. Don't think I'd want him in the shooting, the, shooting the Arab, oh, I'm not allowed to say that, we're on live stream, amen. Shooting people there beside me in the, the trench next to me, but it's all right, 2 Kings 8. Uh, I figure, amen, it's Thursday. We've heard lots of good preaching. We're going to hear lots of good preaching. Uh, amen. Um, after this one. <laughs> so I might as well waste a lot of my time, amen, just uh, telling stories of Kentucky. Amen. <laughs> uh, but I do want to talk about uh, something very, very critical, and that is relationships. And... Uh, and not so much relationships that, you know, husband and wife or which all critical or, you know, the, uh, your, your peers, that is, you know, uh, that is critical. But the um, this relationships and your attitude and spirit towards those um, that God has over you, amen. And uh, I got inspired in 2 Kings 8. Though. Starting with verse 1, it says these words. It says, Then spake Elijah unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, go thou in thy household and sojourn wherever, wh wh wheresoever you can live. For the Lord had called for a famine. And it shall also come upon the land seven years. Huh? And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and stayed in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass huh? at, the, at, the, at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to cry huh? unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king... Huh? Talk with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elijah had done. Came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is a woman and this is her son whom Elijah restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, uh, all the fruits of the field, since the day that she left the land, even until uh, now. Let's pray. God, I pray, God, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, God, you move, you minister, you touch, you give anointing, God, uh, to the message uh, and to the messenger. In the name of Jesus, I do pray, and all the saints of God say, uh, Amen. Relationship. You know, I was thinking about relationships and, and in fact, our attitude or spirit um, concerning um, those that are above us. Remember, leadership doesn't mean that somebody is better than you. They are simply at a God-given place of 
that uh, you are not. But it is interesting um, to note um, the attitude um, of people and especially about um, forming relationships um, with uh, sometimes people they don't know and usually are pastors that are over us, our leaders that are over us, they are not from our ken, they are not from our neighborhood, sometimes they are, uh, they are not from the same states or, or, or the same people of, that we are, and sometimes there, that can affect them, are how we view them, those that are them, over us. But how many know, I, I've always held the thought um, is that God does work through earthly relationships. And I could not help to think about the woman in our text here. Here is a woman, of course, and, and has her and her household, her husband is about life um, it had to be that at times uh, Elijah the prophet would be passing through that area. I, I don't know how long it took this woman, but you know, has he passed through and on to do his spiritual business that Elijah was doing. I don't know if she seen this over a period of weeks or months or even a year, but all of a sudden, you know, Elijah, she's no stranger, of course, this woman would know who she is. She, he is the successor of Elijah. Everybody would have known Elijah. And of course, uh, they, she would have known Elijah, who this guy is. But this woman, she's no kin. Uh, she's not of his same high tribe. She's not, but she makes a decision um, that she um, is going to be a blessing to and form a relationship um, with uh, this man that is got more going on spiritually than um, she does. And of course, you know, she, I mean, this is a stranger. And of course, you know, uh, but she says, you know, I'm going to, uh, hey, husband, what do you think that, you know, this guy passes by and why don't we just invite him in for some good lunch? Get him after that lunch, we'll get him a Dairy Queen. <laughs> and of course, you know, and I imagine, you know, you bites him in, let's eat, let's feed him, and, and, and that's, and as he came by, of course, this woman, an open invitation for him to come into her house and her husband's house. And then, of course, you know, it builds. Not, all of a sudden, it's not just enough that I want to feed him. Let us, can't we just take a little bit of money and, you know, let's build a little addition for this prophet. Let's put him a bed in there. Let's put him a basin. So not only can he eat, but after he eats, he can go up and he can, he can sleep. He can have a little rest. So he'll have a place that he can eat and sleep. And this, this woman makes a decision. And that decision is, you know, I am going to. She recognized that there is something going on in this man and that is not is going on in her life but and I am I am going to make the effort um, to be a blessing um, and um, to have a relationship um, with somebody um, that that God has got in the kingdom um, to give guidance um, and um, direction and I know lots of people fight this. They said, no, I don't need nobody but God. It's just me and God. And I know your spiritual leadership, your pastor doesn't save you. He didn't die on the cross for you. I know it's through the, it's through the blood 
of Calvary that we are saved and set free. But in over the years, people that value spiritual authority, that value leadership and and make an effort, and it is an effort um, that there is a blessing um, upon their life and ministry um, that people that are, I know that, that, that they are saved, they are born again, they'll be in heaven, but they have a reluctance. Um, I know I, uh, I, I'm not going to, he's there, but I'm not going to make, a, why? Let, no, I, I, I and there is something that is missing just in the years that I have been saved and years I've been pastoring. You know, yeah, guy, won't you get to, ah, oh, no, I don't know him. He's not from that. I, I said, well, it don't make no difference. Hey, Amen. He's, he's your pastor. He can, he can be a great blessing. No, no, I'm saved. I, I've been saved, pastoring seven years, ten years. I don't need, I'm a, I, I am all set. I said, well, oh, bro, it's a, it's a free world. At least it used to be, but I don't know. <laughs> South Africa, amen, they just issued a rule. No mask, go to jail. <laughs> did I say I love the African National Congress? I love them. I did say that, didn't I? Okay, I knew that. In case Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa, is watching. But I said, bro, you can do... You can do that, but I think that you are, you are going to miss out because there is, even though I know it's Jesus and I know it's God, but there is people that make the effort. And I know it is a effort. People that are different from you, that are over you. They are from different sectors. They ate different foods. They come from different education backgrounds and levels, but yet the office in which they hold, there is, there is, and God has a, a, a supernatural touch upon that office that when he steps into that office, there is a, there is a spiritual anointing that can be there that can be of blessing. Now, so, so here's this woman, this, this Shunammite woman, and of course she and her husband go all out. I mean, they start forming. How many know? I mean, they open their house to Elisha. And how many know? To sometimes get close to a to somebody, your pastor, you got to open yourself, you know, a little bit. Can you imagine? Amen. The, you know, the, the death knell to many ladies is somebody showing up at their house unexpected. Can you imagine this? <laughs> oh, no, who's at the door? Oh, no, look, there's, the house is a wreck. The house is not a wreck. I, yes, it is. No, it's not. It, let the guy in. Oh, there's five dishes in the sink. Well, so what? It's, But can you imagine, you know, I mean, this woman and husband, you know, they let Elijah the prophet, the man of God, in their house. You know, and how many know the, maybe for the first couple times that Elijah came, maybe the woman stayed up all night cleaning the house, fasting and praying, having the Bible laid out on the table, just having everything. So when he comes in, you know, hey, this is, hi. Uh, oh, here's a lot. I, like, come on in, back. oh, hallelujah, it's so good, amen, there's your favorite soup right there, I made the bed with your fresh linens, amen, Prayed, sprayed some of that lemon mist on that pillow for you, you'll go right out. <laughs> but how many know after a couple of times, amen, oh, it's you, amen, and then... And how many know Elijah would be seeing a husband and wife's relationship? Him snapping at her, her PMSing on him. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> the 
dishes in the sink, you know. <laughs> but, you know, but you have to. And, and oh, no, I've had too many pastoral changes. I'm not going to get, and I'm tired of trying to get, I get used to one, trying to open it, and then uh, there's a pastor change. I, I know about pastor changes. But you have to make the effort because I believe that there is, it is for our own good. But some people, oh, no, 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 I've had so many. Uh, it's just me and God. I can survive uh, all on my own. But, but as she embraced and he embraced this, this man that had more going on than her and her husband did, and they, they realized that, all of a sudden, that earthly relationship would become a great blessing to them. Of course, they, after a while, you know, Elijah tells guys, I, what does this woman need? Does she, does she need money? Does she need that? He said, no, 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 she, she's barren. Can't have kids, her and her husband. And then, of course, he called her up and he said, look, this time, next season, you're going to have a child. So how many know is that because of her taking the effort to establish a relationship with an earthly man. And I, you, you can say, well, no, it was God that blessed. I know God did bless, but God blessed through a man that had flesh and blood. And by her embracing this man, trying to get to know this man, opening up her house to this man, uh, all of a sudden, uh, amen, uh, she and her husband gained tremendously. And there is a blessing. Some people, you know, they want to, you know, they, how many know Elisha, though he had a lot going on, you know, he, he wasn't trying to be a policeman in this household. He was uh, entering in, is that a Biden sticker I see? <laughs> oh. God, I've been in South Africa too long, Amen. Is that a track from ACDC that you did not get rid of? <laughs> Is that a record moody blues that I see over there? <laughs> no, no, he... Relationships that God has over us, their nature is, is that they want to be a blessing, but you can view them, no, 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 they're just looking to spy, to look out what, uh, my shortcomings in life. I mean, I mean you know, uh, Jesus around the disciples, he realized that the disciples had tons of different misgivings, uh, had many different shortcomings, knew of what they were made of, but uh, his life around them was not to just point out all the, uh, uh, all, the, uh, all the flagrant discrepancies in their spiritual life, but to help them and bring them to a place uh, of uh, to be better and fruitfulness that is beyond themselves. And can you imagine this? And, and you can could, you could say, no, Pastor, I'm going to continue on my merry way. I'm not going to make any effort to give myself to, to spiritual leadership and those that are around me. And, uh, but think about this. Elijah would have walked and did business wherever he was walking through. And how many of houses and people would he have passed and other people would have had the opportunity, hey, look, there is the man of God. There is the one that is helping judge Israel, keep us, keep us on the right spiritual plane. He's following in the footsteps. He's not deviating from who he is from, Elijah. Amen. Why don't we invite? How many know there were lots of other households that could have had this opportunity, but it was the household who made the decision. I don't know why the other households didn't think about it, but the, this one household... They made that decision, 
And because they revealed, they opened up, they made the effort, they were better, they became better off down the road than those that did not embrace that. Think about it. Can you imagine sitting around the kitchen table drinking your Nespresso with Elijah? Come on, man. I mean, I mean, t tell us about Elijah. Tell us, I mean, we heard about that miracle. We heard you, 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 you doing this. We, I, 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 can you imagine? I mean, the growth, the, the maturity, the, just the, that these people had and gained from this relationship that they made the choice to do. Just think if they would have just kept letting Elijah walk on by. No, just leave him on his own. I'm not going to press into this. Now let's go on. I'm trying to give you five or so minutes early for them donuts. And as we got the long, that's the long-winded Argentinian, amen, takes it up on you. I'm trying to. <laughs> and don't let him lie to you and tell him that the Argentinian beef is better than South Africa. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> amen, that Wuhan virus has killed their best tasting beef. But now the best tasting beef is in South Africa. All right, let's go on here. See, laughing makes people stay awake. <laughs> now, look at this. See, God speaks through relationships. Isn't that true? And of course, it's from this relationship that this woman and her husband, they, man, they had a miracle child. That miracle child would one day pass away. That miracle child would be brought back to life by the same man that God moved through to give it to him. Amen. How many know you could, you could do nothing but love, this family could do nothing but love Elijah because they did open their house, but Elijah has been nothing but a blessing unto them and their household. And of course, it's always easy to like someone, to give ear to someone that has always given you what you want or always spoken to you what you wanted to hear. But think about our text here. In Kings, woman meets Elijah and Elijah says to the woman, leave your house. How many know that has to be something this woman did not want to hear? Now, how many of you women would want to leave your house? Can you imagine? What do you mean, leave my house? There's a famine coming. Leave your land. Leave your house. I don't care where you go. Just leave it all. But that house, you stayed there with us. That house, we had many good fellowships. That house, I finally got the house in the place I wanted to be. The bathroom is bigger. The kitchen is redone. There's pictures of you, and me, the husband, and the miracle child hanging on the wall. And now you tell me to leave all that? How many know this had to be something that this woman did not want to hear? <laughs> but, and of course it's always been said, you never know what's in a man or in a couple till you tell them no or you tell them something that they don't want to hear. 
And so now this woman, up to this point, I mean, she's allowed, she's got close, she's allowed, she's opened up her relationship with her spiritual authority, has been a great blessing to her. But now, in this chapter, in this season of life, now he is speaking something that is not what she wants to hear. And of course, she has to make the decision, what am I going to do? And of course, you know, she, she um, had to process it. And I will say this, you know, if you've got a pastor that has invested in you and been a blessing to you, that you have opened up your life and he's, and he's been a great help and you understand that you have been greatly spiritually enlarged because of your relationship with him that down the road of life when he says no or says something you don't like you think back upon the past and all his great investment in you I I couldn't help when he, I mean, come on, I mean, this is going to affect her. He said, you and your whole household, go, get out of the house, leave the land, leave it all, go. And she has to, I said, and I guess she come to the conclusion, hey, look, ever since I made the effort to have a relationship with this man, me and my household, He's been a blessing. He's been a help. Okay, now he's saying something to me that I don't understand. I don't see the famine. He sees. And she was able to process it. And she actually left. Now. I remember. People ask me if I'm still flying, and flying is a great diversion, very helpful uh, for ministry, just to getting getting places. And you know, I remember that you know that learning to fly with an instructor. I flew with a at a controlled airport, like OR Tambon Lanceri, their international airport. So you got seven three sevens, four sevens coming in, military planes coming in. So you're you're, you're, you're in a airspace that is, you're controlled by a tower. And I remember, you know, my, my instructor, you know, he had a avid hatred of the ATC, air traffic control. He would, because you could start the plane, but wherever you wanted to go, you had to call the tower and the tower had to give you permission. Permission. I'm a new student. You know, I'm sitting there. He's ranting and raving against the ATC the whole time. I, 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 we're, we're holding short of a runway for 10 minutes. He gets back on the plane with microphone. Uh, this is Keto Sierra Lima. We have been holding for 10 minutes. I'm going, whoa, bro. I mean, I, I say whoa, bro now. I'm, I'm saying whoa, bro. He's the instructor. I'm saying, but he kind of put a, yeah, we should, ATC, there's just a, they just hold us up. They just hold us back. How, who are they to dictate when we can go, when we can go, when we can go, yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, but I remember, you know, the, as part of the, to get your license, you had to take a, you had to get a radio license. And of course, the radio license, is, it's a written. And it's just learning how to talk on, aviation and aviation jargon and how you communicate with uh, with uh, with a tower at a controlled airport and how you at a non-controlled but airport things you do and of course I took the written and passed it now it was my day to face the one that my instructor had always kind of he kind of just sowed a seed of oh well these ATC guys and of course it's the senior air traffic control there in Johannesburg, that you have to face him. And as you face him, he is going to give you a oral or verbal test, meaning you're 
I, I mean, you're, I mean, it, he's going to give you commands. He's going to put you in places outside the control zone at certain levels. He says, okay, I'm going to say this. What will be your response? All right. There's a, uh, an emergency. I tell you to orbit. What, what is going to be your response to me? You are coming in and I tell you uh, uh, abort land. What are you? And of course it goes on. So I'm sitting there, you know, waiting Oh, waiting my turn, and then, uh, and of course, uh, the man's name is Brad. I will never forget Brad. This air traffic, he's a senior air traffic controller there, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, you know, he, we start talking, all of a sudden, you know, uh, and what tripped it off is my, ins my instructor walked me to where this testing station is, and he says, uh, ATC, here's Pastor Ron. I mean, that's what, just what they, and of course, when it was my time to take the test, he said, hey, pastor, guess what? I was in church three weeks ago. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. I call him Holy Ghost Brad. <laughs> and of course, you, you know, you, you get to, and I mean, for 15 minutes, he's talking about the experience of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And here, here's the senior air traffic controller. I'm saying, ah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, I just begin to form a relationship with this guy. I, I did pass the test. He gave me my radio license. Well, Pastor, be honest. Did he ask you any questions? Yes, he did. <laughs> I legitimately passed my radio license. <laughs> but I remember, you know, he invited me into the tower. He said, Ron, you're going to be a pilot. Come up. I want you to see how we work up in the tower. And it, this will be beneficial for you. And, of course, I... Got to know this guy, got to know all the ATC, all the air traffic controllers in the tower and just begin to talk with them, drink coffee with them. And of course, they let me put on the headphones when big 737s, 747s are coming in, you know, and I, get, I got to watch them. But what was mesmerizing and, and was enlightening to me is that why would you not want to be friends or get to know or open your life up to somebody that could be a great blessing with you. Because in the tower, they have radars that see traffic all over Southern Africa. And the, you know, where you're at, your height, who's next to you. How many know the person you don't want to make mad is an ATC because he can, he can actually say, Oh, yes, Kilo Sierra Lima. Amen. You resume your altitude at 2,000 feet because there's another one coming at the opposite direction at 2,000 feet, and I don't like you, so your, your life is about to be ended. <laughs> but, you know, and I learned, and, and you know, my, my instructor, instructor, you know, he's an old, older guy, so he, he, he just, no, no, they're, I said, air traffic control, they're not there to control you. And, and many people think, you know, you're passing all, they're just trying to control me. They're just trying to uh, limit my life. They're just trying to be a chain to my life. They're just trying to get me to do things they don't, that, that it's going to make. And, and their whole view, it's twisted. And of course, my view of ATC was untwisted. I said, man, these people... Uh, are a great blessing, amen. And, and then I learned, you know, why they hold you short of a runway for 10 minutes is because there's big jets coming in and they're going a lot faster than your little VW plane, amen. And you could be halfway out on the thing and get ran over, amen. They're not there. They just have the, the bigger picture. They're not trying to hold you back. They're not trying to make you sweat in a hot airplane in the summer of Johannesburg, South Africa. They are there, amen, to be a help and protective. And they see something. They have something that's been given to them that you don't have, and that is a radar. Your pastor, and this especially kicks in, you know, and because usually pastors, those are over you, they've been, uh, you know, most of the time, 
leader that, that they've been around for a long period of time. They've been shot at. They've been in the line. They went through church plants. They went through rebellions. They've handled things good. They've handled things indifferent. And they've handled things very badly. That's why they're going to try to help you. So you don't go through the same mistakes that they made. They have a radar. They have something that will help you if you will embrace it, if you will help it. How, how many know what I'm talking about? And oh, Brad, I, I just loved it. I was always flying with him when he was up in the tower, you know. Uh, he'd always say, Pastor Ron, how you doing? I'd be on the flight line, get, get, getting ready to take off, go somewhere. And of course, old Brad, he ended up, hey man, one day I was coming in from Botswana and the weather was good when I left, but it got very bad. I couldn't see the, I couldn't see the airfield. I was blind as a bed. I entered into low clouds, and I'm a visual flight rules guy. I've not finished IFR yet, so and I wasn't and I'm night rated, but not instrument rated. But, and I remember, I, I called into the tower, and I said, look, I understood. These people know where I'm at. I was lost. I'm going, wow, I got to get in here. And of course, who was it that answered the, picked up the radio, but oh, Holy Ghost Brad. <laughs> he said, Pastor, I see you. I know the fog settled in. It's, you can't see nothing, but you're up high now, drop down. And of course, he seen where I was at. I could not see. I, I had way overshot. He said, no, Pastor, I'm going to, in exactly 30 seconds, I'm going to turn you 15 degrees. And then, of course, I just listen to me, Pastor. And, of course, I listen. And long story short, the Kentucky boy with shoes, I'm still here preaching today. <laughs> you know, Pastor Greg has been a great blessing to me, but he has been a great help to me. And he has... He's had to say things to me that said, that, uh, Ron, uh, what you said, what you did, that was totally unacceptable. <laughs> you will apologize. You will make that right. I'm going. <laughs> Where is the friend that stays at my house at Bible conference? Where is that one now? Ron, you really blew it on this one. He has a radar that I do not have. All right. The woman comes back after seven years of leaving. And of course, somebody's living in her house and has taken over her land. Now listen. Some of you said, no, Pastor, I've, I've been violated by a pastor, told wrong, and I've done, i followed their direction. And there's a whole other sermon about the power of when a pastor speaks to somebody's life, man, you better watch what you say because people hold what you say in incredible heights. And of course, she went, but now she's come back and it almost looks like, Wow. I left, I, I listened, but now look, my house has been taken over, my land, well, it's almost like, and Elijah now, Pastor Elijah, is nowhere around. Where is the pastor that told me that? Oh, he's down to another church now. Listen, I close with this. <laughs> God, our King, sets over the affairs and listens to the conversations of men. Here is, I know Elijah said this. Elijah, when she's coming back, is nowhere around at this time. But she does the right action. She goes to the king. How many know there is a king, that means Jesus, that's greater than the pastors that we have listened to, and he will make right if you will do right in your heart. See, this woman, she didn't run, run, run away and grab a group of people and say, hey, 
I've been done wrong. I listened and look what listening got me. My house is taken over. My land's been taken over. No, no, she didn't incite a rebellion, but she went to the king. And when she went to the king, Elijah, I mean, Gehazi, and Elijah, they're talking, and as they're talking, um, <coughs> Gehazi's telling the story about this woman. The woman who's valued spiritual authority. The woman, and Gehazi said, here is the exact woman and her son. And so, of course, the king made right because she went to the king. I want to tell you, the king will make right if you will go to the king. There is a king that's over all of us prophets. I'm going to shut up. That's all I got. 